You've traveled all over Aetheris, and even made it to the edge of the universe in-game. Now you can travel in style IRL with the ultra-light, competition-grade Saber RGB Pro Wireless, brought to you by Corsair. With seven programmable buttons, up to 90 hours of battery life, and onboard profile storage, you can take your game anywhere. Get yours today and use code MizTech for 10% off at Corsair.com. Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for Asphodelus, the fourth circle savage. This is the fourth savage raid encounter made available in the Pandemonium raid series in Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. This video covers the first part of the Hesperus encounter before the checkpoint. If you're looking for part two, be sure to follow the link in the description below. My name is Miztech and I'll be your raid guide. We begin with Decolation, which will deal high raid wide damage, shield and heal as necessary. Next, the boss will cast Blood Rake and tether either all tanks and healers or all damage dealers, dealing very high damage to them. While not immediately obvious, this Blood Rake Tether Aether Drain will make affected players vulnerable to a specific mechanic later on, and players will have to remember which group of players was targeted by the first Blood Rake. The affected group is random each time Blood Rake is cast, so make sure you pay attention. Next up, Etheric Clamus will take the Aether Drain from the Blood Rake players and funnel it into his Clamus, which in regular English basically means he's saving it for later. This is followed by a second Blood Rake cast. Again, the group of affected players is random, and you'll need to keep an eye on who is affected as it will come into play very soon. The boss will then cast Directors Balone, and four players will be targeted by roll call debuffs. These debuffs can be transferred to nearby players that are not already affected by the same debuff. After transferring, players will be immune to picking up the debuff for 10 seconds. Immediately after, the boss will also cast Inversive Clamus, using the stored Aether from earlier to create four tethers that spawn on random players. These tethers must be picked up by the appropriate players and spread away from others. Others. Determining who needs to take the roll call debuffs and who needs to handle the tethers all goes back to the two blood rake casts and who was targeted for each. The group of players targeted by the first blood rake becomes vulnerable to the tether mechanic and will die if they take it. The group of players targeted by the second blood rake becomes vulnerable to the roll call debuff and will die if they are afflicted with the debuff at the end of its duration. Since all of us have horrible memories, we use the macro that reminds us what to do as soon as each blood rake cast occurs. Then, when the boss casts Director's Balone, we quickly reference our chat macro to remind us who needs to take what. To avoid confusion and pass roll call debuffs in a controlled manner, we make the tank and healer group stay put in assigned positions around the front of the boss. Damage dealers will then either drop off or pick up the debuff by running to those players as necessary. Once all of the debuffs are on the appropriate group, the raid can prepare for the incoming tethers. Each group can then stack together in either the front of the boss or behind to prepare for the tethers. Since tether transfers can get really wacky when they're spread all over the place, we have the tanks and healers stack in the front of the boss while the damage dealers stack behind. The group that needs to grab the tethers will then move together, swooping through at the same time and in the same direction. This controlled swoop train ensures that no wacky tether business happens. Once all four players have picked up their tethers, they can spread apart to avoid overlap. The boss will then cast another decolation and deal raid-wide damage. Elegant Evisceration is a two-hit tank buster that will target the primary target with massive damage and debuffs. One tank can take both hits with an immunity, otherwise a tank swap with regular cool Cooldowns is necessary. Next up, the boss will cast Setting the Scene, creating four quadrants of elements in a random pattern. Depending on your group's preferences, you may want to move the boss to an edge before the floor panels come out, or wait to try to move him after you see what pattern you get. In our first clear, we chose to move to the edge before we saw the floor panels, which helped our uptime, but sometimes had us dealing with some pretty difficult combos. If you want an easier time with potentially slightly less uptime, you can pull the boss to the edge of the arena in between the water and fire panels. The boss will then cast Pinax which will activate each quadrant in turn. While there is a tiny bit of randomness here, either the lightning or water panel will always activate first. Players will have to be ready to move to the edge of the platform to escape the proximity damage of lightning, or use a knockback immunity or pre-position themselves near the center for the water knockback. On Savage, when a panel is active, players must also ensure they are not standing inside the quadrant during the explosion, or they will take high damage, debuffs, and probably die to the next mechanic if they somehow survive. The first panel will always be immediately followed followed by either the poison spread or fire stack. If it's poison, players will need to immediately spread after the first panel attack to avoid death. If it's stack, players will need to split into two groups and stand on their assigned healer to share the incoming damage. The handling of the spread or stack mechanic will happen within the physical limitations imposed by the lightning proximity damage or the water knockback, and players will need some practice before they learn how to move properly as a group or around each other. This is one of the hardest things to figure out on this boss, so don't get discouraged. Once the 
second panel explodes, the third panel will go active. Again, this will always be the lightning or water quadrant, whichever one didn't get activated first. The boss will also jump to the center and begin to cast a shift attack in a random cardinal direction. Players will have to pay close attention to his cape or sword during this time to identify what kind of attack is incoming. If the sword is glowing, players can expect a wide cleave attack from the pillar at the cardinal point indicated by the cast. If the cape is glowing, players can expect a knockback from the pillar at the indicated cardinal point. Players will have to adjust for this cardinal shift attack while also adjusting for the lightning or water quadrant explosion. Once the shift attack goes off, players will have a few seconds to adjust for the shared fire or spread poison quadrant, whichever panel hasn't exploded yet. Next up, the boss will target the main tank with elegant evisceration, either immunity through both hits or tank swap with cooldowns away from the rest of the group. Another blood ray cast will occur, and this time three panels on the ground will be tethered to the boss. Players will need to identify which panel is not being drained by Bloodrake and save this information for later. The platform will return to normal here for a short time. Here we move the boss into the center of the arena to prepare for the next round of mechanics. The boss will cast setting the scene again, and a new pattern of elemental panels will form. Next up, Vengeful Balone will mark all tanks and healers with acting DPS debuffs, and all damage dealers with either an acting tank or acting healer debuff. If these debuffs are not removed before they expire, you will die. The boss will then cast Elemental Balone, afflicting all players with elemental resistance down debuffs. This will eventually make players take lethal damage from the three elemental panels the boss used Blood Rake on earlier. Another Blood Rake cast, this time targeting all players. This will deal a fair amount of raid-wide damage, so healers be ready to top everyone off before the next mechanic. The boss will then cast Balone Bursts, and eight explosive Aether Orbs will form around the platform. At the end of the cast, these orbs will tether to the player closest to them, marking them up with that roll. Similar to normal mode, players cannot pop orbs of the same roll. Popping an orb will deal high damage in a wide circle that must be soaked by two people. It'll also apply a thrice come ruin stack, and players cannot get hit by more than two orbs or they will die. Furthermore, getting hit by an orb is how each player will remove their acting roll debuffs. To avoid overlapping explosions and ensure that all players are popping the appropriate orbs, we set up around the boss in a specific way before the orbs appear. The two tanks will stand at the north and northeast, while the two healers stand at east and southeast. The two damage dealers with acting tank rolls will stand at south and southwest across from the real tanks, while the two damage dealers with acting healer rolls will stand at west and northwest, also across from the real healers. These pairs will each be sharing the damage of two orb explosions. As soon as the orbs tether to players, each player will run with their partner through the boss to the opposite cardinal and pop their first orb. The pairs will then rotate clockwise to pop their second orb. There is a high amount of raid damage involved here, so healers beware. Next up, the boss will cast Periactoi, and all players will need to stand in the elemental panel that was not tethered by Blood Rake earlier or they will die. The panel will still deal high raid-wide damage, so be ready to top everyone off. Next up, another Blood Rake cast will target all players, shield and heal. The boss will then cast Balone Coils, and four circles will appear around him that will display icons showing either no DPS or no tanks and healers over them. Each coil must have a player of the appropriate role stand inside of it, or they will explode and you will die. Immediately after, the boss will cast Inverse of Clamus, and four tethers will target random players. To handle this combo, we assign a player from each role group to stand in each coil circle. The players that are not allowed to soak the coil circles will need to each grab a tether and spread them apart to avoid overlapping with any other players. The boss will then cast Etheric Clamus, and players will have to keep in mind which role group soaked the first set of Balone coils, as they will be unable to take the tethers later. Another Blood Raid cast on all players to heal through before the boss casts another set of Balone coils. Players will need to quickly identify who needs to stand in the coil circles, and do so before they explode. These players will also be unable to take the roll call debuffs later. Take note of this for later as well. The boss will then cast Director's Balone, and four players will be afflicted by the roll call debuffs. The players that did not soak the second set of coils will need to grab these roll call debuffs off of any of the vulnerable players. During the next Inverse of Clamus cast, the players that did not soak the first set of coils will need to grab the tethers and spread them apart to avoid overlapping others. This is followed by another Decolation Raid-wide Blast and another Elegant Evisceration Double Tank Buster. The boss will then cast Setting the Scene again, and the four elemental panels will again form in a random pattern over the arena. The boss will cast Penax, and the panels will begin to explode one by one in the same manner as earlier. Adjust for the lightning and water first, then be ready to stack or spread. When the boss jumps to the center, carefully identify what version of the attack is incoming and from which direction before adjusting for it and the third panel explosion. Remember that you have a bit of time before the fourth panel explosion to position yourselves appropriately for the final stack or spread. The panels will disappear here 
and the boss will cast three more Decalation Raidwide Blasts in a row before going invulnerable to cast his Enrage. You'll need to bring him sub 50% before this time or you will die. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Up next, we'll look at the second boss encounter of the fourth Circle Savage. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.